My name is Suzanne Reisenbickler, and currently I am a domestic violence coach. I'm a hypnotherapist, um, a trauma counselor. I'm a breath worker. I also am a public speaker, and as of last January, a best selling author. Thanks to my friend and colleague, Rosalind McIntosh, who is on this call. Um, it was she. Uh, birthed the, this idea for a women's empowerment book and so and she invited me to join in that i'll i'll talk about that in a moment but that was that's in a nutshell um so i guess I, you know talking about like my life and you know i don't want to get into all the the drudgery and the dullness, <laughs> you know, the this and the that. Um, how I tend to think about my life is that I, I think about it now in three segments. One is the pre-abuse stage. One is the years that I was um, in involved with a domestic violence relationship very extremely. And the third is the post abuse. And the post abuse is only been, it's only been about um, five years since it's been really post abuse. Um, 10 years ago, it, it, the physical abuse didn't totally stop, but it really went down. But the psychological and the emotional abuse were really ramped up. And it was really difficult for me to extricate myself from that because of, you know, the emotional abuse was so strong and the psychological abuse. Um, so that's kind of how I... I um, see my life. I mean, it's kind of funny, you know, in three parts. Though, I guess in a nutshell, yeah, because it's the, the abuse that I underwent was so, like, significant. Um, it changed how I see things. It changed my perspective about myself, about life, about other people. And my life has taken a different direction since that. So it, it has been, you know, uh, something very significant that happens. And, you know, I would just, I want to preface what I say that Talking and working with people who have experienced trauma, which really is most of us. I mean, who has not undergone some kind of trauma in their life? Some is is much. Some people experience it to a much greater degree than others, but everybody experiences trauma. Every single person does. Um, and what I feel like this just occurred to me, um, I think it was yesterday, that I realized, you know, we never really, quote, heal from trauma. Because to heal from the trauma means like, okay, we're over that now. We're, that's behind us. Our life is on a different course. And if it's been significant trauma, that doesn't happen. Realistically, it doesn't happen. And if we think we are totally healed from it and it's behind it, behind us, all we are doing is really repressing some emotions or some aspect of it. And eventually it will come out in maybe uh, a suicidal depression or uh, a strong PTSD, or maybe we'll just suddenly up and become a hermit, you know, when we've been very socially interactive. It could be anything, or maybe, you know, we'll get cancer or we'll develop a, a heart disease. 
you know, when we deal with um, unresolved emotions, it always comes out in some way, you know, when we don't deal with that. And I feel like people who have gone through significant trauma are always, that doesn't mean they always are triggered by factors of their trauma, but they, there, it's always in their awareness. And what they do and how they think and what they say to people is based on their perspective of how they have moved through the trauma versus still being in it and still being triggered by it. But I, I realize that to say that, oh, th that trauma is gone, it never really goes away. What we do is we just learn to live with it and we learn to adjust and to have to shift our perspective about how we think about what happened and what we think about ourselves. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of my belief and also my observation in working with a lot of people. Um, that's what I've observed. Um, but getting back to, you know, I talked about the three stages of my life. The, the, in the pre-abuse stage, when I was younger, you know, in my teens and 20s and early 30s, I was very, like, adventurous, very free. I loved to travel. I was outspoken. I was a little proud. I was, you know, sometimes pretty cocky about things. I mean, I wasn't always demure. And I also was very philosophical. And then during my, um, the abuse, the 25 years when I was going through the abuse, I was very quiet. I was extremely timid. I was very, very fearful, very anxious. I was oppressed. I was very controlled. And I was suppressed in what I was allowed to do or not do or say or in every aspect. And since I've left that domestic violence relationship, um, I have become, I would say, more thoughtful um, like to describe me, I'm, I'm very decisive about things, which some people who knew me before find it a little difficult to cope with that because I am very decisive and very direct. You know, by gosh, if I see you sneaking around and telling me one thing and doing another, I'm going to call you out on it. <laughs> and a lot of people really don't appreciate that but it you know my apologies but that's how i do now um sometimes i am abrupt at times i still get triggered sometimes in talking about abuse and what happens with other women then i get triggered also um i would say i'm very self-reflective I'm still boisterous, though I'm very observant, and I'm also very, very spiritual. It is centered, um, me coming out of it has centered really with me and, you know, what I do. Yeah. First slide. This is uh, me with my six sons. I have one daughter who's the oldest. And this was at the Sundance Film Festival. We were doing a lot of um, uh, photo shoots and magazine and newspaper interviews. Um, and we were on the covers of a lot of magazines. There was a movie about mostly my sons, but it also included me and my daughter a little and my ex-husband um, called The Wolf Pack.
And in 2015, uh, it won the, the Grand Jury Prize at Sundance Film Festival. Um, the, how it happened was the first time that my sons were allowed to go out, they all went out walking in Manhattan as a group. And, you know, they'd been very involved in movies, always watching movies and reenacting movies. So they were all dressed alike as the, the, the men who wore the costumes in Reservoir Dogs, which was a Quentin Tarantino film. And they were all dressed alike, all six of them. And they were walking, the first time they, they had gone out by themselves, they were walking and they happened to meet a director, which they were thrilled about meeting her and she was thrilled about meeting them and a friendship ensued. And she wound up eventually doing a lot of filming. She taught them a lot about using a camera and the sound and they even did some short films and directed them. Um, and uh, she eventually wound up filming them and making a movie, a documentary about their lives. And I thought it was like very boring, but she's, she did it and edited it and submitted it to Sundance and we won the grand jury prize. Um, so this was a time of coming out for all of us. We had been sequestered in our apartment for over 20, you know, almost 25 years. So this was like a, a big happening for all of us. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there was a lot of publicity with that. And then, thank you. This is a uh, family get together that I had not seen my family in over 20 years. My mother is the woman on in the front left with uh, the long, uh, the t-shirt over the, the light colored shirt. Um, Anyway, this is all of my family. Um, ABC 2020 did a special on us. They actually did two specials. And this was the first one. And when they did it, we they filmed the reunion of me seeing my family again after 20 years, more than 20 years. And so it, I thought it was just going to be like, you know, my sisters and brothers and like 10 people. And here there were 40 people or something. <laughs> and they did all this. So that's my relatives. It's my sisters and brothers and um, there's nieces and nephews. And this is my immediate family, my siblings. Yeah. Um, this is once I began to get out and do things, um, I became involved in different organizations. This was with Malagro's Day Worldwide. They had a Mother's Day walk every year. And to um, pay homage to all of the women who are mothers, some who have died, you know, because of domestic abuse. And I became involved with them. And this was one of their Mother's Day walks that we did. Yes. Um, next slide. Um, another organization that I became involved with is uh, Voices, which is, uh, it's out of the mayor's office to end gender-based violence. Uh, Voices is an offshoot of that. We are a domestic violence survivor and advocacy group. Um, we work with nonprofit groups in the city. With um, We've had input with the prosecuting attorney's office about how survivors deal with court cases. Um, this was an event that we put on for the group voices um, to, um, yeah, it was to raise awareness around domestic violence. I work with a lot of groups who 
raise awareness about that. And it's not just that, it's about working with other nonprofit groups about the prosecuting attorney's office, the NYPD, about what they need to do that they're not doing and things they, you know, they should not be doing that they are, how they behave and, you know. Um, so we're working with that, which has been nice. Um, and the next slide, I think. Oh, that's from the, uh, that's a screenshot, which was what was used in the book that I co-authored with 10 other women. Um, it's called the Women's Empowerment Breakthrough Edition. Right. And right. there, each yeah. of us wrote a chapter in yeah, that this book. One. This one. Yes, that's it. Yeah, we wrote a chapter in that book. Um, and this is uh, one of the women who's here on the right is Roslyn, who has her own nonprofit group, Sisters Building Sisters in Brooklyn. The, and the woman in the middle is Leela Green, who has the Hunks for Hope. This was a fundraiser um, and like a, a, uh, an annual event not just a fundraiser, but an annual event that Leela does to sell her calendar and to raise awareness. And um, a lot of people attend that. And we were all speakers at that event. So that was, uh, yeah, that was nice. Um, so I, I feel like, you know, part of what my life is about now and what it involves is Very nice. the, yeah, being free. This is actually in my beloved Cascades Mountains, which are in Western Washington State. Um, we went on a hike a year ago and it was, I was so thrilled to be back there. This is, that's exactly how I felt you know, being in back in the mountains again. Um, and it's that feeling that, you know, I, I receive that feeling a lot, though it's, it comes and goes. And this was taken, my son took that for Mother's Day. Um, oh, wow. One year, actually, it was at the, the walk, it was on a Mother's Day, with Milagros Day. Um, yeah. And, you know, that also is a big part of my life, being a mother still. I mean, it's like once you're a mother, even when your children are grown, you're still a mother. <laughs> it never changes. Um, but one thing that how important I feel this is, the work around domestic violence awareness and what we can do because, you know, most people, even if they don't realize it, they are in some kind of a domestic abuse relationship. Domestic violence does not have to be physical. It can be financial. It can be spiritual. If your partner is telling you what you have to believe, if you have to join a certain religion, um, what what is what you're allowed to wear, you know, um, if you're, you know, how you can be emotionally being controlled, that also is abuse. So. Um, I really feel like, you know, because it's such an epidemic, especially in these times of COVID, that um, we really have to address all aspects of domestic violence. And the first, of course, is women. We need to serve the women and we need to unconditionally support women. And um, also, I believe unconditionally empower women so that they become their own sovereign beings, knowing what they need, when they need it, and how they need to have it. Um, and 
I would say along with that, I mean, of course, first is women. Secondly, I feel like we need to address the men in the room. You know, why are, why are men so violent to women? Why are they so controlling? What went on in their life that they were never allowed to fully resolve and deal with and process so that they, you know, they just shifted it. And so then they blame it on their intimate partner, um, whoever that may be. That, um, that is something that, you know, I mean, we can, as long as we just look at women and support women, we are going to continue to be putting out the fires. And that's not what we want. We want to prevent the fires. And one step in that is working with the men who have the trauma in the first place. I feel the, the second thing, which is just as important, is reaching children. When they are children, when they're eight years old and nine years old and 10 years old, a very, a, a very lot of children by that age have already had some kind of significant trauma in their life. It might be sexual abuse, it might be physical abuse, it might be emotional abuse. Um, but a lot of children have already experienced it. So I feel like if we incorporate classes and seminars in the schools and even in after school programs to raise their awareness to to give them the sovereignty to make their own choices and to feel good about who they are then we are cutting that you know way way back at the starting gate if I feel like if we work with the children, we are really decreasing the amount of DV incidences in the future. So I, I feel like that's just as important. Yeah, that's All right. Much thank, thank you so, so much. As, as usual, you know, you have talk is really, uh, you know, overwhelming, very heartwarming and then empowering at the same time. Um, we have uh, six more minutes to go, so I will, you know, move on to uh, getting the comments and questions from, uh, you know, the floor. Uh, Zoraya, you have uh, something you want to say? Uh, yeah. Minute? Yeah, just. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Yuko, and thank you uh, all for this time. And uh, Susan, just uh, like always I said, it, this is uh, a privilege you are here and uh, always i said thank you and i'm really proud of you you are an example for me and uh, you're amazing <laughs> you're amazing mm -hmm. thank you yeah yeah oh, that's where you want. anyone yes. else i i feel really happy that you mentioned uh, you know let's address boys and men because you know i, I think it's really important these days uh the Tide is shifting toward, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter. A lot of people are getting a little polarized, um, in, but the addressing the oppressed, you know, uh, people who are, you know, be, being marginalized. So I think it's a great uh, trend, uh, but, the, you know, we, we want to address boys, you know, for this. Uh, DV suggestion. I, I think it's a good, powerful moment. All right. Uh, in, anybody else? Hi. I, I, I would like to say, Suzanne, it's always amazing and so inspiring to hear you. To um, to hear you. And on tonight, it was just extra special to me to hear the different the three different levels to you at this time. Even though we know there's so much more, but um, I just really got to see because I never got to see those pictures and you know take a moment to be still and really hear that portion of your life and it's just your your struggle your plight and everything the um and everything that you as that you have experienced made you such an extraordinary person and I know you and 
you know, and what you said, your authenticity and everything is so real and so life changing. And um, I see you as a colleague, but you always pour into me every time I hear you and every time I see you. So I just say, you know, you know, when you have the triggers or whatever, you know, keep on keeping on and, um, you know, keep on because you're making such a difference and such an impact in so many of our lives. And I just thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rosalind. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel, Suzanne, uh, sharing those photos? I, I'm the one who pushed for photo, you know, shows. <laughs> I, I would like to see what's your reaction. Yeah, well, it, it's it funny, funny because to find them, I, I was like, I had forgotten about a lot of them. And it, it's it actually was very nice. I was like, oh, I haven't seen that photo in a long time. You know, just remembering where it was taken and who was around and what was happening. Yes, yeah, they're all very uh, meaningful. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. when you, uh, uh, you disappeared for a moment, <laughs> because of Wi-Fi, uh, I was telling everybody that uh, uh, the voice uh, is the one that uh, we met, uh, Suzanne and I. Suzanne was at the uh, door, front door, uh, greeting everybody, and I thought he, she was an organizer. And then she came around to the stage and then started talking, you know, as a, you know, the survivor. So I was like, what? Oh. You know, so that's how I, uh, got to know her and then, you know, uh, recruited her to this Women for Success. <laughs> and, and we are so blessed, you know, to have you around. It's really nice. Thank you very much for doing a presentation. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, it's funny that, you know, that was having that event, that was where we met Yuko, as you said, and then I became involved in the group and it's, you know, <laughs> It's been and a year already. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. yeah. Thank yeah. you for doing a lot of a great work. And then, yeah, you you have a lot to offer. You know, this uh, hypnotherapy, you know, those uh, visual, what was that? Med meditation, you know, guided visualization, right? Did yes. I say it right? Okay. Yes. And coaching. Coaching. Uh -huh. And you, you yeah. have a book. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, hypnotherapy is definitely my, you know, that's what I love. And that's where I see the most impact with people because it clears their subconscious mind. So it's kind of like we're, we're getting their conscious mind, telling it to go in the closet for a while. And then I work with the subconscious and it's like, it happens real things happen fast all when right you, yeah the zoom is saying less than one minute so i have to say bye and then people please follow us you know we are on the website and then you know we will talk about suzanne's session you know we'll, we'll post there and, then, and also you know, i would see. like to say quickly uh we have welcome every week we have our meeting and uh women for sex uh the platform is welcome for everybody and uh, yes, thank you so much. Again. Yeah, nice meeting you with you all. Thank you for coming. Yes, Great. Thank yeah, you. This was thank you so work. much. Yeah, thank you. Yes. All right. All right. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye.